Do you know what happens when your beautiful wife throws you a surprise birthday party last night? You spend zero time deciding on what you're gonna talk about in today's video. And instead you just enjoy your family and friends that came over to give their well wishes, which was very cool of them and I thank all of them that showed up. I don't think they watch my videos and that's probably for the best, but for today, let's just talk about, you know, stuff. Like the father or son drama or more like the grandfather and grandson drama of Arsenal's manager Arsene Wenger and Arsenal's best player Alexis Sanchez. If you have no idea what's going on between these two, you need to start reading the internet. That is what it's there for. Rumors, fake rumors, truth, not truth, it's all there. But it all happens at the beginning of the year, 2017. They were playing against Crystal Palace and they were up two to nothing and Alexis was visibly upset with some of his teammates at the end of the game, even though they were winning, and he took that anger and took it all the way across the field after the game was over and into the locker room, and everybody was like, what? And then two weeks later, he was furious about being substituted in a game that Arsenal was winning four to nothing, and it was against Swansea, and Danny Welbeck came in for him, and Danny Welbeck hadn't played in like two years. So I like, get it, like it makes sense. Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't Arsene Wenger do that? It makes sense, chill out, relax, but, then I heard that he's refusing to sign an extension to his current contract which ends at the end of next season because the club's ambitions don't match his own. And then, if only to prove that lack of ambition theory true, Arsenal got beat down by Bayern Munich 5-1 in the first leg of the round of 16 of the Champions League. And for them to come back at this point in the second leg, pretty unlikely. And it also, if you can believe this, there were people in Chile where Alexis is from that want to protest him being on Arsenal. So they all signed a petition to go march to say, we don't want him at Arsenal anymore. And fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on how funny you think that is, only four people showed up at the march. But if anything, it's a sign that it's become very, very obvious that Alexis Sanchez has outgrown the club in some capacity and it's time for him to move on. But just because he's frustrated, that doesn't give him the right to act like an asshole to the coaching staff and his teammates either, which apparently is what happened midweek, which then led to him getting kicked out of training, which then led to him, for disciplinary reasons, not starting against Liverpool, where Arsenal proved yet again that they failed to consistently get up for the biggest games and they lost three to one. Had Alexis started the game, who's to say how that would have changed the outcome? But when he did come on at halftime, he made a huge difference within the team and therein lies the rub. Because what do you do as a teammate when you know your best player doesn't want to be there anymore? I mean, you want him on the field because he gives you the best chance to win the game and you want to win the game of course, but you also don't want him on the field because you know he doesn't believe in the team anymore. And the same goes for the manager. Do you do whatever it takes to win and keep him in the team or do you? Is the main man in charge that everybody is looking at to set the tone and the messaging for the whole club, not make concessions for one player, no matter how how good he is to do what's right for the team overall. I mean, I think we all know what the answer is. And speaking of Alexis specifically, I admire his passion and I think he's right in wanting more for himself and for his teammates and for the club. I think those are good traits, but I think he's wrong in how he's handling it, especially as one of the leaders of the team. But maybe, maybe he doesn't want to be a leader anymore. Maybe he's cared for so many years now and cared so much that he's being worn down by the guys that don't care as much as he does and he's going to show them by not caring anymore either. So in summation, this is the off the field game that Arsenal is playing right now and it is not going to end well. But here's some other thoughts that are rattling around my ping pong ball sized brain. Like Kareem Benzema, who is the man for Real Madrid when Cristiano Ronaldo and Gareth Bale did not play, and he notched two goals and two assists in their 4-1 win over Ibar, which helped Los Blancos keep pace with Barcelona, who played one of their best games of the season, which I would like to add was the first game after Luis Enrique announced that he was gonna resign at the end of the season. So coincidence? I think not. And I gotta give some love to Coach Tab Ramos and the US U20s for winning their first ever CONCACAF championship and qualifying for the U20 World Cup. That's what's up. Ooh, Major League Soccer started this weekend and there were some great games and there were some great goals, including first ever goals in two brand new stadiums in Atlanta and Orlando. I'll put those links in the description. But my favorite by far has to be Anibal Godoy's game winner for the San Jose Earthquakes over the Montreal Impact. It was a 1-0 game, so obviously it decided all three points, but he did everything right. He won the ball in midfield, he kept his run going forward, and then he had the classiest finish, and I'll put that link in the description too. Also, what's that Mings dude's first name that stepped on Zlatan's head? Not that it matters, because we kind of just know him as the guy that stepped on Zlatan's head. And with regard to this play, I'm not saying that he did it on purpose, but I'm also not saying that he didn't do it on purpose. He just put himself in a situation that it could possibly happen, and then it did happen, and he should be punished for that. And Zlatan's elbow retaliation, well, that was clear, and he should be punished for that as well. But if I'm being honest with you guys, I would have done the same thing, 
and I have done the same thing. When I was in Poland playing for Lech Poznan, Americans didn't get a lot of respect on the field. And they probably still don't overall, unless your name is Christian Pulisic. But I was up for a set piece, and this guy punched me in the face when the referee wasn't looking as I was trying to make a run to the near post. And I tried to chase him a little bit, because your immediate reaction is not, hey, I'm in a game, I might get a red card or whatever. You're like, I'm gonna kill this dude. I'm gonna smack him in the face. And I didn't get a chance, because he went and stood by the referee, he was like laughing, as the referee was looking at me, and he was behind the referee going, hee hee, making stupid faces. So it was on. But I became patient. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna wait four or five minutes. Thankfully, he was a striker, so when he was trying to post me up, he put his arms out like this, and I just got my arm underneath this arm, and I just pop, pop, popped him like three times, and he was upset, I think a little blood trickle out, but I was like, I don't know, the referee didn't see it, didn't see it, but his coach saw it, and his coach took him out of the game, and I was so disappointed. Because that was just round two, baby. He got round one, I got round two, we needed a deciding round. Also, the lesson here is, and this probably doesn't make me the best role model because I fought violence with violence, but you gotta stand up for yourself. Also, before I go, does anyone else find it weird how good Harry Kane is? I mean, he just looks like he should be doing something else. He doesn't look like a proper player, more like a, a bouncer at a nightclub, or maybe even an astronaut. <coughs> okay, I think I need to go sleep and shower and shave and just, and just be one with my inner chi. Okay, I don't even know what I'm talking right now. Later.